you don't have access to a wall of quantum, iridium, or any of the other synths that have stereo filters, then why not just build it yourself in Ableton? Um, stereo filters are wonderful for pads. They open up a whole new world of sound, movement. Let's have a listen to what I've created here, then I'll show you how it works and how you can build the instrument rack yourself and use it with any of the synths within Ableton or any of your VSTs, AU plugins, whatever and expand those synths with the use of, let's say, these filters. So here's the effects rack that I've created. Let's just have a quick look. We have here on the top the controls for the left filter, um, frequency, resonance, um, envelope modulation, type of filter, LFO depth for the cutoff and the rate for the cutoff. Then I also have here a pan LFO, the rate and the depth to pan the signal. And this just repeats itself below. Um, here we have some macro variations I've saved. So if we open it up, we can have a look what we have here. We have a chain. And once we've done the explanation, I'll show you how to assemble this instrument rack if you're interested. So we have a chain here. We have a left channel and a right channel. Filter left, filter right. These correspond to these macros. I have a little bit of pan on each and a little bit of reduction in the gain because um, you're effectively doubling the signal here. Um, on the main, as always, it's good to have a limiter when you're experimenting with these things or playing with these things, just, just a tip. And so these things repeat themselves. On the left, we have filter left, the audio effect here, the auto filter here, I've dropped in here, and an additional LFO to control the panning of the signal. This is all mapped here to the macros. So I have control all over all these things. This repeats itself on the right channel here. If I click on the right here, we have a right channel. These run in parallel, so the signal is split as it comes in. One copy goes to the left, one copy goes to the right, and then the rack mixes them and puts them out at the end. Okay, so, um, that's pretty much it. There's not much more to it. It's very simple, but it's very effective. Now, you could say, well, why do you need this? You've heard some of the examples uh, in the intro there. It gives you an idea what you can do. You can pan this, the individual filtered effects left and right. Um, you have individual cutoff frequencies for the left and right channels. All of these things are very powerful. There are some instruments here. Um, I'm using Wavetable to generate the pad. I've created my own pad, but um, it's Wavetable. You can see here we have two filters effectively. You could say, well, why not just use Wavetable if I have access to it? You have some advantages with the rack. You only have um, two LFOs here, so I can only modulate the left and right 
fre frequencies, filter frequencies, if I want them to be different frequencies, which I've done here, um, maybe we can just have a quick listen, you'll get an idea. This is an exact copy of the pad that I was playing before called Space, so play both. And you can hear, you don't have the, the, the movement in the sound. Let's have a listen. You get a nice sound. And you could add extra LFOs to pan if you wanted to. That's an option. Let's have a listen to the other. Let's go over here, make sure we get the right one. Yes, it's on space. Hopefully you can hear the, there's more movement in the sound. Okay, so that was my motivation really. I used to have in the old days a blow felt um, and that had the stereo filters. That was wonderful. It was a <laughs> quite an interesting instrument to program but once you got the pad set up it, it was really fantastic especially in combination with wavetable okay so i th i think that's it basically in terms of the explanation there's not much going on let me just show you how this is put together this is actually quite a quick build so it shouldn't take too long to show you i've kept the original effects rack here you can get audio effects racks here and audio effects just drop one in I kept the original rack as always so that I have no need to rename all these. It takes a little bit of time. The first thing we're going to have to do then is open up the chain, which is this icon at the bottom here. If we click here, we have access to the chain, which um, allows you to combine multiple effects and run them in parallel through the effects rack. Let's drop our auto filter in, go in here. We're going to need one LFO as well. Put that on the back. Uh, we can rename that to Pan. So we have now the rack set up. Let's do a few settings. I had the gain minus three here. This I will have a little bit so that these are all preferences you can set this up how you want and i will name this this is important um left filter and i will also name it here left filter So that you don't get confused when you switch between them which can happen quite quickly then we just need to set this up very quickly i think everything else is okay we need to map our lfo to the pan here so we we'll increase that to 100 percent just want to map here this to this and then we will connect the macros here so that now this lfo now has control of the pan position for this filter. So there's anything else we need to do? That could be it, I believe. I've kept in Hertz here. You can have musical intervals if you want. Again, it's your choice. Also, I've got sign here for the modulation form. Um, right, I think that's okay. Let's have a look at the filter, make sure everything is nothing to do here. Right, that's it. So we can now effectively then right click duplicate this rename this right filter change our pan to the right our mapping should remain and then we just need to set our macros up so we will start with the Let's start with, the, oh, we need to rename this, of course, what I was saying, you have to be very careful. Right, right filter. Okay, let's start with this one, then let's map this. We have here the filter frequency. Well, we'll start on the lower one, because this is the right filter frequency. Map that here. Resonance, envelope, 
filter type the LFO depth here this controls the filter cutoff here we'll see that in a second depth and the rate as well then we have the pan rate and the pan depth and the pan depth I think I believe I reduce that to 50% but I say these are values you can experiment with yourself now we do the same for the left channel click the left channel filter frequency resonance envelope type the depth of this LFO because you have individual LFOs for each um, filter the rate then the pan for this one the rate here and the depth and, and that if just change this to 50% as well the pan depth Make sure everything works okay so we're on the left filter here left filter so if i change the filter type you should see it change between the filter types um we can change the lfo depth here see that here so everything's connected um that's it really you can hide this one here so you don't have everything let's see if it works um going to open up my variations you save it here if you click here you can save it into your uh, effects racks and pull it into any any other channel you want to use it with it's it's a permanent thing let's have a listen uh, see if everything's okay there we go very easy but a very powerful tool to have in Ableton. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. My name's Andrew. I've got plenty of videos on the channel where I make these creative ideas in Ableton at the moment. I'll hopefully expand to some other things, some hardware instruments in the future. Enjoy your day. Take care.